In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you, O Lord. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, O Lord, for this wonderful day. Lord, thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time. Where we have gathered over here to hear your word. We have gathered over here to listen to the truth. Lord, as we have gathered over here today, we believe that your word is the truth, which is what is setting us free. Lord, we believe that we are anointed. We are anointed to give praise and glory and to glorify you and your word. Lord, we believe that it is nothing of our own efforts, nothing because of what we did, but because of what you have done for us, that you have died for us, that you have taken our punishment, that you have taken our place on the cross. Lord, today the reason why we are anointed is not because we lived the life in faith, but it was because of your love which you poured on our lives. You forgave us our sin. You set us free. Help us a lot to walk in the freedom, the liberty that you have called us to walk in. We believe that, it is, that today whatever we are doing is nothing by our own strength or ability, but it is by your strength and your ability put in us to bring God kind of results. We believe in your word and we receive it. In the glorious and mighty name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Okay, so let's go to Mark. Mark chapter 4. Mark 4. Verse number 35. Okay. So, uh, and the same day. What was the same day? Now, Jesus was preaching here. Okay. He was preaching on uh, the sower and the seed. And he was teaching them how to plant the seed and how to receive harvest. And so here the Bible says, and the same day when the even was come means, and the same day when it was evening time, he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. So what this scripture okay, is saying is here, Jesus is saying, after the whole day of preaching, when it's evening, around four o'clock, five o'clock, he's saying, let's go to the other side of the Lake of Galilee. And they had sent away the multitude. And they took him even as he was in the ship. See, Jesus, the way he was preaching was the whole crowd was on the shore, on the coast, on the beach, in other words. And he was sitting in the boat and he was preaching. And the people are there and he is in the boat and he is preaching to the people who are in the shore. So that means he was already in the ship. And so as he was already in the ship, what what the disciples did was they just boarded the ship that he was already in and they went. And, you know, I would say uh, th there would be other people saying, I want to follow Jesus. Let me also go with him. And they would also uh, have come with Jesus with the other little ships. Okay. And there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship. So that it was now full. This whole ship was full. And it was. Uh, it was like a storm that just arose. 
and the storm which just arose, this storm did what? It beat into the ship. The water, the waves was so uh, was so um, uncalm that they were now starting to uh, starting to attack that ship, come into that ship. Okay, which Jesus was in. And they were all full. This ship is full. So this ship is bigger than the other ship because he said this ship and then the other little ship. That means this ship was bigger than all the other ships. If this ship was full of water that Jesus was lying on, then that means the other little ships, uh, the other little ships were even much more full in water. They, they probably had got water inside earlier than Jesus, the boat of Jesus did. Why? Because it was smaller. The boat was smaller. So these other boats are full. Jesus' boat is full. And there is water. There is a big storm. See, whenever there is a storm, there are a few things that happen. First, thunder. Second, light, lightning. Third, wind. Okay, wind. Where it's all windy and you're shaking about. Uh, fourth, the sea is very uncalm. Okay, the tides are very uncalm. And uh, for uh, uh, fifth, I would say so. It's also very dark. Whenever you are in a storm, it will not be nice sunny day. It will be very dark. And plus, they're in the evening time. Okay. And now they are going, and the ship is now full. See the thirty it was, and he was in the hinder part of the ship. Asleep on a pillow. The way Jesus is sleeping looks like he did not care. And that's what he what he did. He did not care. He did not bother. Because to him, what was more real was that the angels are all around him. And this is what we are going to study in the coming few days. That the angels are around you. Now Jesus was able to rest in peace. Sleep. See that? And the, and he was in the hidden, hidden, hidden part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. He was sleeping in a boat that was full of water. See, when you're sleeping, and if you're sleeping in a storm, there would be certain things that will wake you up. First, the water that is in the boat with you. Second, the wind when you're shaking about in the boat. Third, the thunder, the lightning. People screaming for their life. Right? Yeah. But here, Jesus was not bothered or was not concerned about what was going on around him. He was not concerned of what is happening, how, how the waves are there, what, what is taking place. He was not concerned because he knew the angels are around him. He knew that God was with him. He knew that the Lord was with him. Chris God. Okay, by mistake, I got mute somehow. I don't know how. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Now, so as uh, what I was saying was, Jesus was in complete rest because he knew that the angels were around him. And this rest is where you know you're working. You know what you're working to do? You're working to remain in the knowledge that you know that the angels are all around you. When you understand and you know that the angels are around you and they are taking care of you, that's when you will no longer be worried anymore because now you will be in rest knowing what God has promised for you. When we understand what the Lord has promised for us, now we will be able 
to walk in complete prosperity and success because I have understood who I am in Jesus. The word of God is what is working in my life. The word of God is what is taking control of my life, but it can only take control of my life when I allow the angels to work. See, many a times what, what, we, what happens is we end up doing the angel's job. But that should not happen. If you are calling on the angels, don't do their job. They will do the job. But what you need to do is just be faithful to believe. What you need to do is just be, uh, just be, um, how to say, just, just be ready to believe. And that's what it, that now, now Jesus is waking up. See that they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? Is that you have no faith? Why are you fearful? Where did your faith go? When I misunderstand my personality, my nature, my character, who I am in Jesus, I will always walk in sickness, defeat, and poverty. I will always walk in the place where I have the lack of understanding of the nature of God in our lives. Many people are not experiencing what the Lord has for them because they are carnally minded. They're focused in the flesh and not in the spirit. And so every minute of our life, what we need to learn is how to be focused of, in the spirit, how to understand and walk in the spirit. A person who starts Walking in the spirit will start living the life when they start to believe in the scripture, accepting the truth, believing in the truth, and there will surely be a change in his life. When I take time to understand, okay, and start to believe that the angels are all around me, that's when it will remove that working hard and that labor out of my life. Because now, instead of working hard and laboring, I make the decision to believe. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. There was a great calm. See, when Jesus spoke, Jesus spoke with authority and there was not a single time where God, where, where Jesus spoke without confidence. He always spoke with confidence. You know why? Because he, he knew that word. He knew that the angels were there. He knew that word. Many, many a times, the reason why we are not speaking with authority is because we don't have the understanding of the angels that when I speak the word, they have to obey to that word. It is only when I understand the nature of God in my life that I can walk in the spirit and I can walk in the fullness of Christ Jesus. If I don't understand my nature or I, or I don't understand the nature of Christ that has been put in me, I will not be able to walk in the spirit. Praise God. So are you understanding? Okay. Now let's continue see, seeing this. Okay. But let's go to Mark uh, chapter 6. Now this, hap this happened once in Mark chapter 4. But it did not only happen once. Okay. And this is what we'll see, verse number um, 41. Okay, uh, 45. Now, this is where Jesus feeds the five loaves and the two fishes. 
and now and straight away he constrained means what he forced his disciples to get into the ship that means the disciples were not willing now the same incident happens again where the wind is there uh the 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 the, the wind is uncalm the water is uncalm thunder lightning but jesus is not there this time okay but they were still fearful now and straight away he constrained means what he forced and this happened again in mark chapter 8 where they did not believe now what what we are learning from here is not about the storm and jesus was in the boat because in the next chapter there was in mark chapter 8 sorry there was no uh, no storm they were just in the boat but there was still worry and there was still unbelief okay and this is what we're seeing this part of the scripture that we are seeing what we are seeing is actually how they were in unbelief and how they blocked the angels from working in their lives where jesus allowed the angels to work in his life so and straight away he constrained his disciples to get into the ship now how i like to see it is these disciples are fishermen and they have been fishing all their lives so if they were going fishing they would be able to tell and they would have been taught that if you look up and you see that the sky is not that nice and you see that the sky is all gray and darkish that means there might be some rain or there might be some storm so please that day you would not go fishing okay and so they know this but here jesus is telling them to go and probably they can see up and say oh today is not a good day to go into the ship and that's why i like to see as all of them were not ready to go but jesus is forcing them saying go 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 maybe because of that reason because because of the reason that uh they they can tell that today is not a good day to go in the boat so and straight away he constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go to the other side before unto bethsaida while he sent away the people and when he had sent them away he departed into a mountain to pray and when even was come when the evening was come the ship was in the midst of the sea and he was alone on the land that means so that means now when the evening had come when everything now, now when the evening came and now when it was coming to be night time and now it's dark the only and, and it's pitch dark it's night time it's middle of the night now the only thing that is there for them the light that is there is the light from the lightning the light from the lightning and so that's what is happening here and when even was come the ship was in the midst of the sea and jesus was alone on the land see jesus said you go but i'm not going because i want to spend time with my father in heaven and he 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 he, he was not okay jesus was not doing this out of a force jesus was not doing this because he was forced to do it but he was doing it because of his relationship with his father in heaven okay now here the evening had come the ship was in the midst of the sea and he was alone on the land and he's praying because he knows that the angels are there whereas the disciples are all alone okay in the midst of the sea and see that was number 48 and he saw them toiling in rowing for the wind was contrary unto them and about the fourth watch of the night he comes unto them walking upon the sea and would have passed by them now when you are in a boat and nobody is there only another few disciples are there with you and just maybe two or three people are there with you pitch dark the only way you can see is because of the lightning and so suddenly the lightning strikes and you can see a person walking towards you what would happen you would be fearful you would be scared 
you would be all uh, fired and all scared and all worried. And this is what was happening with the disciples. How many times in that situation would we say, Lord, I believe that the angels are there. And even if we say that, we are saying that just because we need to say it, not because in the heart. In, 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 my, in personally, I would have just said it, but it would not have been in the heart. Because when you're going through something like that, your focus is more on what is happening rather than on what God's promise. But we need to teach ourselves not to focus on what is happening, but to focus on the promise of God. So he now, now this is all night. He is departed into the mountain to pray and suddenly he is walking upon the sea and would have passed by them. But when they saw him walking on the sea, walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit. Some translation says they supposed it had been a ghost and cried out. They supposed it had been a ghost and cried out. But they all saw him and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them and says unto them, be of good cheer. Be faithful. Don't be fearful. Don't be worried. Believe in faith. In the kingdom of God, the one thing we need to do is stop being fearful and start being faithful. And he went up in, un, unto them in the ship, and the wind ceased. So he's saying, be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And he went up unto them in the ship, and the wind ceased. And they were so amazed in themselves beyond measure and wondered. When you are a... Th there are a few things that are the result of being a, a ma a, amazed in yourself. First, you don't believe in Jesus. You don't believe in God. If you're ever amazed, because this is what God has called to do. This is what the Lord is doing. And if you're amazed when this happens, that means you are not believing that the Lord can do that. And they were so amazed in themselves beyond measure and wondered, for they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened, for they were fearful and they did not, and they were not faithful. Every time in our life, if we don't believe in Jesus and if we don't know that the angels are there, you know what we're going to end up doing? Live in fear. Many people are experiencing sickness not because they did something bad, just because of their fear. And so this fear needs to be cast out completely because fear is demonic. And when you're fearful, you can never be faithful. What we need to do is be fearless and faithful. And that's when we will always succeed in life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. So did you understand? Any questions? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, uh, today we'll pray for those... Uh, all those who have any type of thyroid or sickness like that, thyroid, okay. Thank you, O Lord. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, as you have given me the authority to speak, I speak to every spirit of thyroid, every spirit of sickness, to be cast out, to be uprooted from the root and to be cast out in the name of Jesus right now. I bind every spirit of thyroid that is coming against any person. I uproot it, I curse it, and I cast it out in Jesus' name. I lose that whoever is suffering with this thy thyroid, they are completely healed, they are restored, they are delivered. The life of God is flowing in them. The love of God is flowing in them. The blood of Jesus is flowing in them, and they are completely healed. They are completely restored and they are, they are experiencing total restoration in Jesus' name. Lord, your word is the promise. We make a decision to believe your promise. And Lord, we believe that the thyroid, thyroid gland is completely healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Amen.
Amen. Praise God. Okay, so we'll close with the ending prayer. Thank you, O Lord. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, O Lord, for revealing to us, teaching us, guiding us, leading us, making this teaching extremely simple and easy for us to understand. Lord, we thank you for your love, for your forgiveness, for your compassion, O Lord, for teaching us in a simple, easy, practical way. Lord, we believe that your word is what is setting us free in our life. And we believe the freedom that we receive is not by what we have done, but because we have believed in what you have done. I bind every spirit of destruction that is coming against us in the name of Jesus. I uproot it. I curse it. I cast it out in the name of Jesus. I lose that we are all anointed with your word to live that life which you have called us to live. Thank you. We praise you and we glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray, Abba Father. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, praise God. Um, so, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. We'll pray in tongues. Praise the Lord. Harabashi. De, 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 